Radar is a savvy feature in automotive, but the market demands faster resolution and positioning of moving targets. Texas Instruments has just introduced the new AFE 5401-Q1. The AFE 5401-Q1 is a receive analog front end designed specifically for ADAS radar systems. It features one-third less power, 2x sampling speed, and 20% reduction in footprint compared to competing solutions. The device comprises four identical signal chains. Each contains an LNA gain stage, an equalizer with an option to bypass, a programmable gain amplifier, an anti-aliasing filter, and a 12-bit 25 mega samples per second ADC. The outputs of the four signal chains are combined in a 4 to 1 MUX before outputting CMOS data to the parallel interface at 100 mega samples per second. In addition to a conventional data clock, the device also outputs two fully programmable synchronization clocks, which tie seamlessly to the horizontal and vertical video sync ports of your DSP or processor. Four auxiliary analog inputs are also available to bypass the analog front end and drive directly into the ADC. This is useful in the system for digitizing monitoring signals such as battery voltages or temperature sensors. Evaluation of this device is possible with the AFE 5401-Q1 EVM used in conjunction with the TSW capture card, the red EVM here. This EVM, which contains the parallel CMOS receiver in its FPGA, requires three connections, a 5-volt power supply, a USB cable connected to a PC running the software GUI, and CMOS connector J1 mated to the AFE 5401-Q1 board. The green EVM is the AFE 5401-Q1 EVM. It requires the same three connections to begin testing a 5-volt power supply, USB cable to a PC, and the CMOS connector mated to the TSW1400 EVM. The board itself is laid out so that the AFE 5401-Q1 is in the center, the analog and auxiliary inputs are situated to the left, and the CMOS outputs to the right towards the connector. There is a provision to use additional buffering should a user want the CMOS output to drive a capacitive load that exceeds the device specification. For instance, in the case of driving a DSP directly via a translation board. An onboard 25 MHz crystal oscillator located here provides a sampling clock. When used with the test patterns generated within the device, no external test equipment is required to confirm functionality of the setup. This is also useful for testing and understanding the programmable sync outputs. Now we will quickly test the EVM in this configuration by first selecting and loading the AFE 5401 FPGA firmware. Next, switch to the tab labeled AFE 5401-Q1 and select from one of 12 common device configurations provided with the software. Return to the ADC tab and click the Capture button to view the captured data, in this case a ramp test pattern. Next, we measure the device performance by providing coherent signals to the analog input at J48 and the sampling clock at J3. Since we are now providing the sampling clock externally through J3, the onboard crystal oscillator should be depowered by moving jumpers J4, J5, and J8 from the extol position to the transformer position. Return to the AFE 5401-Q1 tab of the software and change the selection from ramp test pattern to normal ADC data. Then back to the ADC tab and click Capture. Displaying real FFT will show the captured spectrum with key parameters measured and displayed in the left column. Here we see SNR is 67 dBFS, which matches the datasheet specification. It's that easy. To order samples or an EVM yourself, or to find out more information on the AFE 5401, check out ti.com slash AFE 5401. And thanks for watching.